Thanks for clicking. Welcome to Time In with your host, Ricardo Lungus. With me is the tough as nails, Anthony North. How you doing, Anthony? Hey, Ricardo. I'm doing great. Tough as nails, tough as nails. I mean, I, that's what that's that's the mantra I live by in life. Uh, you know, if it can't be uh, driven by a nail, uh, then it's it's really not worth even doing. And I, exactly, I, I exactly. believe I believe strongly in that. But I mean, I I think tough as nails. That that's Ricardo Lungus. Uh, you know, comes coming from the background, Ricardo. I mean, the big brothers uh, that he took on. You know, hey, yo, I, yo, I didn't, yo, yo, it was more or less, you know, I'm, yo, hey, 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 I just held my own at the best, you know, you, yo, you look at Thumb, you, you look at uh, uh, Lucius, yeah, yeah, you know, yo, yo, Lucius, yo, he was skinny and lean, but you know, he, he's also like six eight, yeah, you, you, you can't mess with that, you know what I'm saying? You can't mess with that. But sp- speaking of being, you know, yo, yo, doing what you gotta do to come back, yo, 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 uh, uh, we gotta welcome back, yo. Mr. Tommy Crenshaw, how you feeling? How you feeling now, Tommy? Thanks. Thanks for the well wishes. Uh, thanks for the balloons and uh, the, the cards that play music when you open them up, which they say has got more technology than was used to launch the space shuttles back in the 1960s and 70s. Oh, definitely, which, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, so that's, uh, you, you're saying that I'm worth more than a 1960s space shuttle which uh, means a lot to me when I open up a card and it says, get well there, pal. And it has a hey, song to it. you get the steaks, it. though? Did you get the steaks? I got me, the, me and Anthony both sent steaks over. I got the steaks. They, those steaks right now, are, 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 I'm going to save them for a special occasion. Didn't get a chance to eat them. Uh, you've been been on a diet of, of soup and, uh, and and ramen noodles and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, just to kind of – so for uh, th- those of you who don't know, what happened was uh, it was in the middle of the night. The power goes out. You know, and it's like one of those things that you just like, sometimes the power goes out, you just wake up instantly. You think it's going to put you to sleep. But it's like, the you know, I, I fall asleep watching old, like, boxing VHS tapes, and uh, the, 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 the wife doesn't mind. And, uh, but we, we woke up, and she, you know, we got to figure out what happened. And you're just like, you know, you're just waking up, you're kind of like in that drowsy mode, and you think there's like some diehard villain out there, like, cutting the cables to your power because he wants to take over your house to use it as some base that he's going to, like, you know, do some nefarious stuff with, which Definitely. never happens. No, it's usually something small, like a twig got cut in the line. So I go out there, and I, I, I go to the box, the electrical box, and there's freaking turtles. There's uh, five of them that are standing on top of each other, screwing around with the utility box. Like, this is like a freaking episode of Scooby-Doo or something. And I just like, and I caught him by surprise. And one of them got the top one got shocked and flew across and it hit me in the schnoz. And I fall to the ground, hit my head, uh, got concussed. And the, the wife comes out, uh, you know, and she's got a broomstick and starts hitting. And and, and with, with, the, with the turtles are still there and they scream. I've heard a turtle scream. Uh, it's a bizarre sound, but nonetheless, I didn't get taken to the hospital. Uh, they, they kept me overnight for observations. Um, uh, they, they, uh, you, you don't embarrass, you tell a story. You just say, I went out there to, uh, and I slipped on a puddle of, of, uh, some fluid that probably came from like, uh, you know, a sick raccoon or something that got into it. Uh, it was you know, Tommy, Tommy, yo, yo, there's no other person on this planet. Something like that could happen to other than you. There's no other person. Oh, that's all I'm saying. No, I no, I think it, uh, a lot of people it could happen to, but uh, most people would would slip on a puddle. You, have you, ever, you ever like you know you 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 go to bed one night, and you got a bunch of half open bottles of like you know some slits or something, and your your wife throws them out, and then like the raccoons get into it and get drunk, and then they start throwing up all over your garage because uh, you know it, it's so that's plausible, and I think a lot of people identify with that. But the turtle thing, I know is. Uh, and, and, and anyway, let's. Um, while I was uh, uh, while I was down for the count, I watched that uh, Netflix uh, special thing, uh, the, the the Malice in the Palace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, watched yeah, that. I one. saw How that about the you, other Anthony? day. I, you know, I couldn't avoid it. Every, everyone was talking about it. So what yeah. what you, what'd you think about it, Tommy? I I, I uh, man, there, there's a lot to unpack there. Oh, you know, definitely, it, definitely. I mean, this is told from the perspective of uh, the, the the Indiana Pacers. Uh, you know, you, you're getting one side of it, which I think is a side that needed to be heard first. I'm waiting to see if they do a part two and you hear what the, what the Detroit Pistons are saying or what uh, 
you know, maybe some of the the, the, the sweat wipers, you know, the, the towel peoples, you know, maybe you get some other perspectives. But uh, I think my, my main thing is this. It Okay, so malice in the palace. Uh, usually, like, things don't rhyme that perfectly in sports. True, true. Like, you, you don't, like, you don't hear things like, you know, you, you never hear, like, Rambo and Lambo, where, like, some guy goes crazy with a Bowie knife and starts cutting the cheese off the tops of people's hats of those mitten-wearing moolahs. Uh, you know, I mean, look, man, I, uh, Green Bay's a great town, great sports town, great sports people. But stop with the cheese hats. You just look ridiculous. But but my point is, is that it, it nothing really rhymes with arenas, nothing rhymes good with uh, the field houses, uh, the, the, the centers, you know, uh, Minter and the center. You can't. So I think it's like a perfect thing where they were waiting for something to, to go down. And they said, this is the time because it's going to rhyme. And people are going to remember it for like 20, 30, 40 years. So I think there's a little bit of a setup there. A little setup, maybe. You know, I think uh, what it really comes down to is this just shows you how culture is now. It's terrible, right? I mean, this back in the 70s, this is just a, another day at a sporting event. You know, that you could have went to a, a hockey game. Uh, that's not even a five-minute penalty. We call that a minor. I mean, you know, he threw a drink, he threw a punch. Hey, hey, that's just hockey, right? You know, the old, the old saying goes, you know, I, I went exactly. to a, a, a fight and a hockey game broke out. I mean, I, I think that's just the normal. That, that's the, that's the normal uh, yeah, event that's that everybody hopes that they'll see when they go to a game. I want to be entertained, right? I, I don't, I don't care for shooting threes all night. You know, oh, look, he made 17 threes. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I was falling asleep in the third quarter. What I want to see is, is bring back the good old days. They were called, the bad boys. I mean, the Celtics Pistons, some of the best basketball of all time. You saw Bill yeah. Lambeer and Larry Bird oh, go yeah. at it. Oh, yeah. I mean, th- you know, they, they were like, they were like prize fighters. You know, 6'9", 6'11", throwing punches, oh, throwing yeah. balls. Uh, you know, come on. That's that's entertainment. Oh, that's definitely, that's definitely, you know, and, you know watching that that whole, you know, your documentary, you know, you know, and, and they're, they're trying to make you know, uh, uh, well, Steven Jackson, Jermaine O'Neal, Ron Artest, or Metal World Peace. You want? He was Ron Artest then. He's Metal World Peace now. You know, they're, they're trying to make him out to be all you know these thugs. You know, you got thugs. You know, thug. I hate you know I hate that term thug because there's only like a few thug, truly thuggish people. And if you play hard and you get a little bit too emotional, they just won't call you a thug. And that makes me angry. That makes me angry. You know, you know if you're a figure skating, you skate too hard, are you a thug? I mean, what what, what are we doing here? What what is, what is this? What is this? You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a stupid term, and they're just trying to throw these people on the bus because they want to be civilized. That's all that stuff is. They're trying to be civilized. And these people over here, ooh, they're, they're not civilized. They're thugs. They're not like us. They we don't get angry, you know, you know all this stuff. And, you know, it, 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 it irks me. It irks me. Yeah, you know it, why? It, it, yeah, why? Why? Tell us why. You know why? Because hey, those people in the fan, uh, the, the stands, the fans in the stands. Yo, let me do that again. The yeah. fans in the stands. That that rhymes. That's yeah. what it should have been called. Oh, yeah, the, the fans, fans in the, the stands. stands. That's what the, it should have been called. The, the fans in the stands. What what weren't they called thugs? They were out there throwing punches. They were out there throwing beers, which started the whole damn thing. Oh, yeah. Pardon my language. Yo, yeah. uh, yo, yo. They were throwing chairs. They were yeah. throwing popcorn and beers and punching and fighting people and coming yeah. out on the court thinking they're going to fight somebody. And then, yo, you looking up and run our test. And then you all like, uh, uh, he, he hit me. And I did a little whiny, little, 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 little chubby thing him. You know, yeah, talking yeah. about, yo, he just, he, the whole thing is, yo, yo. Everybody, people think that these athletes are something above, you know, because they have so much talent. They think they're like this high level of human being, but they're just people. They're just people that play basketball better than, you know, the, the average person. Right, right. And if you go up to the average person, you throw a beer in their face, they're going to punch you. They're going to punch you right and, in the face, right. A- exactly. You know, it's happened to all of us. You know, you know we, we've all probably had beer thrown in the face. we all probably had to punch somebody in the face. I mean, I mean, it's happened to me once or twice. You know, maybe you know, I'm talking to the wrong girl or whatnot. But you know, it, it's what happens. It's what happens, and it, it, you can't. You you, you got to look at it. You got to look at that, and that's what I think they tried to show in the documentary. They just tried yeah. to show that, and that's one thing I did like about that. That's one thing I like. That's one thing I liked a lot. 
Yeah, the, the, the hypocrisy, though, is freaking uh, 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 blaring. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, because, uh, well, first off, you got to keep in mind, a few years before, you had the Dodgers uh, playing at Wrigley Field. And they, they go up, and some some drunk idiot tries to take the hat off a guy in the bullpen. And then, of course, exactly. what's going to happen? All your boys are going to come up there into the stands. Because they got your back. They got your back, and they roughed the guy up. And that guy was the wrong guy, just like it was in, in the, the deal at Auburn Hills. Uh, you get the wrong guy. You punch the wrong guy, and then all that, it turns it turns on you. Now you become the bad guy. But uh, you never had, you know, a, a, a rhyming scheme for the Wrigley thing. I mean, it was, uh, what was it that Ernie Banks called it? He called it uh, the uh, the friendly confines. So no one ever said, oh, the undermines at the confines. Nobody said something. <laughs> That's cool. a good one, Tom. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't rhyme, and it just was the, the sport that we didn't, you couldn't call you know, baseball players thugs. I mean, because they, so, uh, the, 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 okay, so here's the hypocrisy also, is that uh, Auburn Hills is an opulent community, right? Yeah, There's a lot yeah. of rich people, you know, people that haven't been in street fights. Yeah. And uh, basketball guy players are tough. Even if they're not from the streets, they're tough guys. Right. Oh, you gotta be, you gotta be. You gotta be. Even Reggie Miller, one hundred percent class and professionalism, but he's got a tough side. Push comes to shove, he'll shove your butt to the ground. No, you're not a soft type. I mean, just the you know, he was like Magic or like Patrick Ewing. You know, these guys or like the wrestler, The Rock. You know, they they they're tough. They will beat you to a pulp, but they have a certain class. You know, they're like a guy, like a fine lady, could bring home to dinner. You know, with to her old racist parents, not knowing what to serve the guy. You know, and if it's the rock, they might have made a mistake and they cook like a whole pig and put a pineapple all over it. And uh, if it's Patrick Ewan, they might have like uh, cooked a curry goat and uh, a pick a pepper sauce, you know, all over the place, you know. And then, uh, but uh, it, 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 anyway, th- what I'm saying is that uh, I'm just trying to say that uh, the, they, they try to switch, to do a switcheroo with the, the class of the, the paces. And uh, the the Pistons were like the bad boys. Call them the bad boys. Well, you couldn't handle that when some real bad boys came to town. You know, you put a target on your back, put the bad boys, and then on top of that, you got these monkeys. That's what they were. They're like monkeys. When you go and you get a ticket and go to a ball game, you cannot act like a monkey because you got to realize there's some real athletes on the court. And what do monkeys do? They throw things. So the drunk monkeys will throw more stuff. So these guys come up from the top of the stands. By the way, how on earth did all these drunk guys come down? You, you ever been drunk at a stadium? You need help getting down. All of a sudden, these guys get you know, get down. There's some conspiracy stuff going on here. So then they start throwing stuff. They it's called the they pierced the veil, which is like a, you a monkey is going to the lion exhibit or separated at the zoo by a piece of glass with the lions, and they start throwing rocks to monkeys to taunt. The lines on the other side and the glass breaks. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, those lines are going to come across and they're going to annihilate. They're going to tear the limbs off those monkeys. So these play, these fans are lucky that their limbs weren't torn off. They're lucky that the players had some dignity just to throw a couple of punches. I mean, come on now. You get throw, stuff thrown at you. Uh, you know, you know, people like uh, hockey games to throw in shoes at your face, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, catfish and all kinds of slimy things. And you never know what these guys up in the, you know, Auburn Hills are throwing. I mean, they, they, you know, they, they, they got money. They could be buying some uh, real, uh, you know, like the throwing stars and stuff. So I, I just think it's, it's, it's a ridiculous thing. The guy should never have been suspended because, you know, this is, keep in mind, this is before like the, the where uh, people, these investigators online would find out where you worked and get you fired. You know, if this would happen today. All those guys, that all those monkeys in the stands would have been fired from the jobs. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, you know, I, I say, you know, maybe you, you they, these people got big suspensions. Like Jermaine O'Neal got twenty five games. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, the Steven Jackson got thirty. Ronald Test got the rest of the season. You know, and, and for protecting himself. You know, like you know, you know. I mean, yeah, he ran out to the stands, but the other guy, he was protecting himself. Dude ran up on him. You know what I'm saying? You know. Uh, you know, you know, at the most, at the most, you know, give Ron Artest, you give him 15 games, give the other two, five or 10, whatever you want to do. That's what should have been. That, that should have been it. Maybe give him like a big fine or something like yeah. that. But, the, you know, the, it, that was that was ridiculous. That well, that was just. The, well, why, why would Reggie, Reggie, Reggie uh, got uh, suspended for a game, too? He was wearing a suit because he was hurt. 
And that's the yeah. thing that, like, you know, he, well, he, if he'd been playing that game, I mean, the question is what would happen? Because, like I said, that, that's a professional guy. And, we, you know, you, you take him out, and then all of a sudden people are like, I, I don't know, you get fined. He's wearing a suit, and then, yeah, the security guard didn't recognize him. And that security guard should have been fired. Exactly. You know, I mean, it, 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 he, he's been in the league, what, well, he was, well, was there for like 17, se- 17 seasons, 18 seasons it, at that point. I mean, yeah, come on. He was one of the faces of the NBA. You can't exactly. recognize, obviously, and also in a suit. You got you do, do the math there, fella. You guys that tall, and he's in a suit, and he's hanging around the players. What do you think he is? What, you, you think he's, he's somebody he's, important? Yeah, you, you think he's there just to like hold a bag and squirt water into somebody's mouth? I agree with you completely, Tommy. I mean, it, it, it's all a debunkle. It was all just a big stage. It was all trying to save the the NBA's image and all that stuff. I mean, yo. Yeah, you know, like 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 uh, uh, Anthony said earlier. I'm used to some hard nosed basketball. I'm used to some people. You know, they. You know, you you take a charge, you might lose. You might lose some teeth. You know, that that's what oh, I'm it. used to. Yeah, I mean, at least. I mean, you know, you know, that's why you know that's why you know people back you know started wearing those little face masks. Oh you yeah, know, like because they kept getting their face broken, and you can only get your face broken so many times, and and your your face just remains broke. They can't fix it no more. That's you know. Uh, I've seen a couple of people like that back from the old neighborhood and stuff like that, you know, and, and, and now, now they're trying to be like, oh, we're the nice, we're civilized and all that stuff. I mean, come on. It's, it's just a bunch of, it's just a bunch of BS that, that they're doing just to make, make themselves look good. So they don't lose revenue. They yeah, weren't going to lose no revenue. Yeah, dude, but, but how much of this do you think was staged? Because I'm going back to this. I got no proof of this. This is speculation, prognostication, as we always do. But uh, the idea is, uh, remember who was on the Bad Boys team? You, you mentioned, we mentioned Lambeer, we mentioned uh, Isaiah Thomas, but oh, also yeah. Yeah, Dennis Rodman, you know. Uh, so uh, you got the Bad Boys, and it feels like maybe they were trying to make a shift, like this is a wrestling move. The NBA is like, you guys are going to be the Bad Boys now. And Reggie said, I don't want to have any of that. So he gets himself hurt, says, I'm going to retire. If you guys are going to go this direction, I don't want to be Bad Boys. I'm going to win it uh, in, in, in a less cartoonish way. And uh, but to, but to, to your point, I think they bit off more than they could chew. Because here's a, here's the weird thing: they started doing the saying, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get away from this thug mentality." Everyone's getting on there and saying "thug, thug, thug," which is code word for basically uh, anybody who's not uh, is a black person that white people don't like. Exactly. Well, let's just call exactly. it. Let's just call it as it is. I mean, that's really what it is. And the, but the, they say, "Okay, you can't have the long baggy shorts anymore. Like, we're gonna go to the Arthur Ashe shorts." Like, wait a minute, now. Yeah, don't you have a team called the Knickerbockers? Like the, exactly. Like that's it's a bunch of, you have a name. You have a team that is literally named a lone pair of shorts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna say you can't do that anymore. So you didn't tell the Knicks you got to change your name, and they start changing all the names and stuff. Remember they changed the name of the Bullets. I say, I mean that's another thing. I mean that's another code for like trying to like saying that okay we're gonna go get away from this stug culture. So it's no longer the Bullets. The Bullets used to be up in Baltimore, but named after a train, just like the Dodgers were. Exactly. It's a train. It was not named after something that comes out of a gun. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of that, you know, it, 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 instead of addressing the thing like they should have addressed, which I'm going to, you know. Oh, Dennis which, Rodman yeah. right there, the dress. No, 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 no. That was later on. That was oh, later okay. On. I yeah. thought you were making no, reference to Dennis. No, okay. Or, or no, that, that was earlier. That was earlier when he wore the dress. Oh, man, I'm, I'm getting my timetables mixed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. Or, no, I was never good at those at school either. Yo, know, what they... uh. What they need to address is what something that uh, Metal World Peace was talking about in the documentary about his mental health. Oh, yeah. Mental health is a big thing. Mental health messes up a lot of stuff in in this world. And he was trying to be calm. That's why he went and laid down. You you, you know how he said in the documentary, he went and laid down on the table to take five seconds to calm himself down. Right, yeah. Because he was angry. You know, you you get angry and, you know, if you're suffering from depression and anxiety— and yeah. and you you got you have to take a second you have to calm yourself down and nobody right. wants to talk about you know you know people's mental health they just want to brush that stuff underneath the rug until something bad happens then bam they're the bad person but right. you knew this this dude had this dude had a uh, a psychiatrist that traveled you know with him yeah you know, he did it, yeah and, 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 but and he was trying his best I mean, and and the, to really take care what of it comes himself down to is the game was dragging on. You know, and our test had an, he had a psychiatrist appointment. I mean, that, that's something that we didn't, that we didn't see in the documentary that's been documented is, is our test was supposed to be in an appointment at that time. 
Uh, and the game just kept dragging on. The officials, you know, they, they were trying to, you know, keep these teams civil and, and you know, call it fouls when, you know, teams up by 30. Uh, this this game should have been over. Our test should have been sitting and, in, in, you know, on the couch uh, like he was, uh, you know, sharing exactly. his thoughts, uh, yeah. trying to get, you know, trying to get things out, you know, but, like we all do. Uh, you know, and the next thing you know, he gets hit in the face with a Coke. Uh, probably probably thinks his therapist uh, has had enough, got frustrated. Uh, you know, it's, it can only hear the same story so many times. And, and the next thing you know, he goes looking for the therapist. He doesn't even find the guy who threw the coke. Uh, Artes just hits the guy that looks the most like his therapist. I mean, you know, you know, sometimes you have a little backseated animosity against somebody that's trying to help you. And, and, and that happens, you know. Uh, and it, But I think afterwards he had a lot of time to talk to his therapist because of the 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 game suspensions and whatnot and uh and later on you know in life i think it actually helped him out a lot you know because you know he went on and he didn't have as many problems later on in in his career that's where he changed his name you know because world peace is all all our tests really wanted yeah but Uh, he changed it to something else now he's back to our test hyphen uh uh, is he using his wife's name or something like that? Uh, w- w- what's the name? He's well, using? I don't know about that one. I, I, I haven't heard about that one. I've been paying attention to Ron Artest in the last few years. Uh, it, it, yeah. No, it's Meta Meta Sandiford Artest. That's his name. Meta Sandiford Artest. Yeah, I'm not forget where the Sandiford uh, comes from, uh. but uh, but yeah, I mean, he's I, I, free to change his name. Everyone changes their name from time to time. Yo, know, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day. These are just my thoughts, you know, you know, the media saw a circus that they could promote and, and, and the NBA saw a circus they wanted to demote. And so everybody, so all the NBA players got screwed. Uh, you know, all the people, Jermaine, uh, uh, Steven, Metal World Peace, all of them got screwed. And that's the, you know, that's the big thing. You know, the, the, the circus did not work well on this occasion. And that's the end of the game. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ricardo Lungus with Anthony North and Tommy Crenshaw, TTFN. <laughs>